Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema. Sit down as I continue to come out of the COVID days. I uh, am just, I literally have a checklist right now where I'm just going down the line, checking off the movies that I wanted to talk about in full that I didn't get a chance to do after seeing them at the end of 2023. Uh, and this movie. What a wonderful surprise this was. And much like a couple of the movies that we've been talking about, is a movie that after watching, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Like, there, there's so many interesting, cool little things going on with this movie that just made it pop. And at the center of that is a brilliant performance from the one and only Mr. Jeffrey Wright. What are we talking about? Why don't you pull up a chair? Take a seat. We are getting ready to dive in spoiler-free into American fiction and oh man was this movie not at all what I thought this movie was going to be um, I, I had seen a trailer for it at the theaters um, and conceptually it seemed like something that was going to be so dope and something that would be perfect for Jeffrey Wright to take on and fascinating to see Wright take on this role because in the synopsis, a novelist who's fed up with the establishment profiting from black entertainment uses a pen name to write a book that propels him to the heart of hypocrisy and the madness he claims to disdain. Basically, Jeffrey Ryder feels that he's a black author, and he writes what a black person would write about, which is just stories. He just he writes fiction, sci-fi stories, and you know they're all kind of middling. They never really popped, and he goes to a book conference and sees uh, a, a woman, a black woman, uh, played by the always very, very funny Issa Rae. And, you know, she starts reading an excerpt from this book, and it's like, them's people's over theirs, and, like, just getting, like, as black and, like, just stereotypical as you could get. And you watch Wright listen to this excerpt and just be like, you see him getting mad. Uh, and I say Wright, his character Thelonious Ellison, who goes by Monk, because, you know, Thelonious Monk. Um, but you're seeing Monk just get angry. And he goes back to, you know, his publishing guy, his agent, and is like, I've, I've, got, a, I've got a new book. And he just goes home and he writes this piece of just flat, fictional, if this is what everybody wants a black man to write, well, I'm going to write it the most ridiculous way you could do it. And turns this thing in, his agent reads it and is like, Monk, I'm, I'm nervous. I can't send this to people. And Monk is trying to prove a point. So he asks him to send it out. And then all the white heads at these book companies are like, oh my God, this is the most raw, realist book of all time. And that conceptual idea for a comedy with Jeffrey Wright spoke to me immediately. I was like, oh, this should be hysterical because Jeffrey Wright seems like the guy that would write the books that Monk is writing. I don't know if I've ever seen, you know, Jeffrey Wright put in a place or, or a role where he's like a hardcore gangster. I thought that would be very funny. And knowing how talented Wright is, I thought that would be, like, just such a good time at the theater to watch him do that because it's a role that feels perfect for him but at the same time is doing something that, like, I've never seen Jeffrey Wright do. And then I get to this movie, and I'll watch it, and I realize that Cord Jefferson has written and directed something that is legitimately brilliant. Um, the part of the movie that I didn't really know was going to be part of the movie is the other side of the coin, right? Like, yes, what was in a lot of the, the trailers and what the concept is, is, you know, write, writing this absolutely ridiculous book called My Pathology, um, where he's just writing the blackest thing that he can come up with so that people could have their black story, right? And in tandem to that piece of the story, you're also seeing what's happening in Monk's real life. And at times, it's happy. At times, it's sad. At times, it's heartbreaking. At times, it's joyous. And it's complicated. And it's intricate. And the more I watched the movie, and by the time I got to the end of the movie, I was like, oh my god. Here's Cord Jefferson. Not just doing this, you know, outlandish comedy, but this really, really smart film where you're talking about putting people in boxes. Now, for Jefferson, 
putting people in that black box, right? Like, what what is it that society, or maybe white America, or whatever land you want to land in, what are they expecting to come from someone who's black, right? That black box, the books that Monk writes, he says, he's like, that is a black book, I'm a black man. But that's not what society is expecting from him. So when he does give them what society is expecting, ho, oh, it blows up, right? Because you've been confined to this little box. But outside of that box, when you watch Monk's actual life, it's something that I can relate to as a white guy. And you go, huh, that's not what you typically expect when you go to some sort of media that is black driven or Asian driven or white driven. And that was the thing that started to become so apparent to me with what Jefferson was doing on the script side is that this story, while yes, it is coming from a black experience and it, it, it's covering all of those things that are happening to Monk in that story, you could literally replace Monk with just about anybody because no matter where you fall in society, we're all put in boxes, right? Like, you know, yeah, I'm a white guy, but I'm a nerd. And there's a very, very defined nerd box. I'm sure a lot of people would try to put me in that and be like, oh, what are you doing talking about American fiction, man? You like, you know, superheroes and things like that, right? Like, everybody has their own personal MO, their thing that they lean into or that they love, and then people try to put that thing into a box. And watching Monk's personal story be so straightforward so man i've had things that like that have happened you know it's just you give monk a human story and it allows the movie to really flourish in the sense that like yeah the world and society in general try to put us all in boxes but we're all so much more than that box and there are more similarities and comparative things when you're looking at the real world and that was the genius of the script from Jefferson, like seeing both sides of that, right? Like the outlandish hysterical satire that he's writing where Monk is doing this My Pathology book. And then like the thing that I love about that is that the more and more he decides to ride this out to try to prove a point, the more and more complex and absurd things start getting. Like he starts having to do interviews with his face hidden uh, where he's acting like this gangster. When he talks to people, he's got to talk like a thug. Uh, there's, there's a shot of him walking across the street to go have an interview with Adam Brody's character. And he's just in like a t-shirt and, and regular pants. And you see him trying to find that like gangster swag, like I've been in jail bit. And like... That stuff is all absolutely hysterical, and the more and more you go down that line, the more ridiculous things are getting, and the fact that people continue to buy into the, the nonsense that Monk is putting out there, but when you watch that side by side with his actual story, and you're seeing how, like, Monk is going through some real shit, um, and it's good and bad, right, the way that life is. Um, you just, you see the absurdity of the box that he's being confined to by society. And that was just something from a script I thought was brilliant from both Core Jefferson and his co-writer Percival L. Everett. Um, and then directing wise, like I said, I just love the way that he does the movie. Like the, the little things that Jefferson comes up with. Like one of my favorite scenes is you watch, you know, Monk writing a scene for this book and then you get two actors that appear in front of him acting it out and then they're having a conversation like getting to see like the creative process for Monk is just as fascinating as getting to see Monk be put in front of people that are trying to confine him to a box and he's trying to just throw it in their face to like when you're seeing his personal life just the way that Jefferson moves in and out and the different things that he plays with to tell a story is all just wonderful and then when you get to the performance side of things I mean Jeffrey Wright is one of these dudes that like every time he's on screen every time he's doing something I have to pay attention I gotta get involved I gotta dip my toe in man because he's just so damn talented and like I said this is a role where like Monk and what's going on in Monk's life seem to fit Jeffrey Wright perfectly. The idea of him being a gangster doesn't seem to jive, right? And like, just in that, in and of itself, I'm putting Jeffrey Wright in a box because I haven't seen him do these other things. So getting to see him play with that stuff where it's like, 
the movie is doing like meta things on top of meta th like it's so complex and intricate and there's so many layers to the movie and to Monk's character and, and Wright just handles all of it effortlessly he's so freaking good uh then you throw in Tracy Ellis Ross who plays his sister she's great um it's one of these things like when he goes back to see his family he's not super excited about it because you know there's his brother and his sister his brother played um by Sterling K. Brown they've kind of got some commonalities and some similarities and things that they know about their dad that, you know, Monk doesn't have. So he kind of, like, he's like, I hate seeing my family and all this stuff. But then when he gets there, watching that kind of melt off him and be like, yeah, man, this is my family. And where they take that story, I mean, Ellis Ross is fantastic with what she's asked to do. Sterling K. Brown, yo, this guy. Every, another dude, every time he does something, I'm so intrigued. And this was a role and, and something that I didn't expect necessarily from Sterling K. Brown. I thought he crushed it. And just the little things that he's doing. Like, there's a lot going on internally with Clifford. And, and watching how Brown navigates those things in moment to moments where he can finally talk about some of those things. To how that's impacting Monk and what else is going on in the story. I just thought he was fantastic. Keith David. I love Keith David. He pops in. He is one of those two actors that pop up in front and have that conversation with Monk as he's writing the scene. And, like, it's one of the funniest moments in the movie because they're like, man, I wouldn't do that. Like, it was, uh, it was just so wonderful. Love anytime he pops up. John Ortiz, who plays Arthur, uh, Monk's uh, agent, fantastic. Uh, his response to when Monk first gives him to the book to then doing the agent thing, right? Like, it's like, I can't send this anywhere because this ruined everything. But... You're my boss, so I do what you ask. And then the thing starts to take off. It's like, Monk, you know, we, we about to make a lot of money. <laughs> we about to make a lot. Like, don't mess this up. Like, Ortiz is fantastic. And very much like in uh, several movies that I've seen recently where there is an agent involved. Some of the conversations and back and forth are just laugh out loud hysterical. Um, I mentioned Adam Brody. He pops in here as a guy who's trying to buy the book rights to make a movie. Or by the, yeah, by the rights to make the book into a movie. Um, you know, playing one of these Hollywood, you know, white execs, but like who's hip and jive and in and like does things with black media. Absolutely hysterical. And like the conversation, the first conversation that he has with Monk is fantastic. Like it's the, the whole, like it's just so great. And then they spin it into something toward the end that, that that's the other thing, man. Cord Jefferson did one of these like almost like breaking the fourth wall without breaking the fourth wall type moments like you get to the end of the movie and this thing is about to happen and it plays into a conversation that Monk is having with Adam Brody's character Wiley uh Valdespino the names of some of these characters are phenomenal um but like the way that Jefferson plays with all that stuff and how Brody responds to the different things that Monk is giving him is just great Issa Rae has one of the best dialogue moments in the whole movie. You know, it, like I said, she's the one that's got this, like, super, super, you know, stereotypical language and story and delivery, and it's blowing up, right? It's the, the antithesis of why Monk does all the things that Monk does. And they end up on a, 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 a like, awards panel together. And she doesn't realize that she's talking to the author of My Pathology, which he then changes the name to something else that's freaking hysterical. Um, and... You know, it gives Monk this opportunity to ask some questions and things about her book. And seeing that and how that conversation plays off of each other is fantastic. She's very, very good. Um, and then Erica Alexander, who plays Coraline, neighbor of Monk's... Um, something brings the family back to like one of their like vacation homes down by the beach. And I think they're in Massachusetts. Um, and she's the neighbor. Great stuff. Um, a really nice character to put into Monk's world as Monk is going through all of this. Um, and, and where she's coming from, both, you know, personally and, and you know, emotionally, I thought worked really, really well. Uh, then you got Myra Lucretia Taylor, who plays Lorraine. She's kind of like the, the family's maid, which in and of itself has like a bunch of layers to it because you're talking about a black family with a black maid and, and how you know she kind of plays into this this caregiving um especially as they're kind of looking over uh their mom who's played by leslie uggams um the two of them are just fantastic their relationship in the movie is great how they relate and how they play into monk's world and his family dynamic uh is wonderful 
And it's one of these where, like, the whole cast, everybody just shows up and delivers big things. Right down to Raymond Anthony Thomas, who plays Maynard. He's like a security guard who drives around that part of town where, where they're hanging out for a good stretch of the movie. And then I'll even throw in some of the more ridiculous people who pop up in here, like Miriam Shore and Michael Cyril Creighton, uh, the two people at the head of the book company that are trying to get the right, you know, get everything done for the deal. One of the phone conversations with the two of them is absolutely hysterical. Um, you know, the people who come in to, to do the, the book judging and stuff that he, inter- like everybody they put in front of Wright and Monk play wonderful roles for the movie, for laughs, and for Monk's story. And, and that's the thing at the end of the day, that, like this one works so well because of the story that uh, Cord Jefferson and Percival ever have come up with here. And like I said, it's one that's just so much more smart and, and so much more intriguing than I thought the movie was just on the surface value. And when you're talking about stuff past the surface value insight, like the movie is just able to do all these things. And then you bring in Laura Cartman to do your, your music. And she's got this cool, smooth jazz, jazzy tone kind of just playing throughout the whole thing. There's some keys, there's some horns. It's really like, I love me some jazz, you know, music and blues music. And the mixture of that kind of scoring everything that's going on in the movie was wonderful. I really loved her score. And at the end of the day, this is a movie that is just rock solid across the board. And then it does more things than you expect the movie to do. Like, I went in with a clear expectation and a perceived notion of what the movie was going to be. And then it ended up being so much more than that. And that is really at the heart of of the story like that's the 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 meta aspects of it and the things that's taught like they're all of us even though this is a black story swap your characters you know bring in a randall park tell an asian story you know bring in a ryan reynolds and tell a white story like you could plug in anybody and a lot of the concepts the the general concepts can apply everywhere even though you're getting into the specifics based on the person or people that you're you know writing the story about and that was the thing that i just thought made this movie exceptional so let's uh not waste any more time let's get the sea maniacs up like i said i think what you get from cord jefferson here both on the pen side and behind the camera side is just exceptional he's playing with so many different things so many different concepts and the way that they all get thrown into this blender and come out this is a story and a movie that I don't think is just for black people or just for anyone of a particular... Like, you can be anyone and you can watch this movie and you can walk out of that movie taking things away that line up with you personally. You know, I'm a white man. I walk into this movie, I walk out of this movie and I go, man, there are so many things in there that I jive with, that I understand, that I get. And that's really the, the special sauce in, in Jefferson's story. And then telling the story that he is telling from the black perspective really, really works quite well, especially when you got Jeffrey Wright in the lead and how he's able to just punctuate all these different moments throughout the whole movie is wonderful. The whole cast here is flawless. Everybody turns in great stuff. And then, like I said, that score from Laura Cartman is the cherry on top of the cake that brings everything together. And we've said this with several movies this week, right? Like the top movies for me this year have all had this thing where it's like everything is coming together and then it's the score. For me it's just the score brings it all together and i really liked the the jazzy vibes that we were getting from laura cartman throughout the whole thing so i gotta go four and a half out of five c maniacs i mean this was a damn near flawless movie um and, and just a wonderful treat right at the end of the year i didn't see it coming I, I thought it would just be a good laugh a fun time and it was all of those things but then just so much more again it's one of these movies you're gonna get in your car you're gonna be walking out of the theater talking to your friends or your family that you're with and you're just gonna talk and just go down the, these different avenues that, that Jefferson has set up. So for me, American Fiction, one of the best movies of the entire year. Now, I flip it over to you and I ask, what did you think of American Fiction? Have you seen it? Uh, did it work for you? Where do you land in the race world? You know, are you white or are you black? How did you perceive things going on in the movie? Do you think this is something that can apply to more than just one race? Or is this a very, very black only story. Um, like I said, I think this is a story that can be consumed and related to by everybody that has very specific black things that are in there that make it, you know, a black story. Um, so what did you think about, you know, the idea of a black story in general being put into a box, you know, is, is Monk, uh, uh, is he giving you black stories when he's just writing these sci-fi things? Um, what do you look for in your reading? Um, what was, you know, working, not working, anything that you've got, if you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, what, intrigued you in listening to me talk about it anything 
good, bad, indifferent on American fiction, put it down below in the comments section. I look forward to talking to you down there. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, you want to come hang out with the C-Man anytime. We're talking movies, TV, trailer, reactions. You want to be here to see what my best of 2023 is when I finally get there. Um, you know, again, coming back from COVID. Give me a little bit, we'll get it all there. But you want beer for that, you want beer for anything that we got going on in 2024. You dig the vibe, you want to show a little love and support. Come join C Maniac Nation, super easy. Jump over there, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell if you want those alerts. And until next time, for the C Man's Cinema, sit down! I've been the C Man. I'm signing off! Peace! Oh, <laughs> you guys are still here. You snuck up on me. You must be looking for more of this guy. Well, I got two video options for you, man. Right up here and right over here. And if you want all those C-Man goodies, well, hey, come join the squad right on over there. And I'll catch you on the next one.